Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing well. And um, six months back, I made a lot of videos on market timing and how the market looks like. And if you go through our YouTube channel and you look at the videos between uh, March to June, we made a lot of videos on what is the current market situation and what one should do. And since then, I haven't made much videos regarding this, but I think again, market is at a juncture where uh, again, we need to stress upon how does the market look like and we need to analyze. And I'm a firm believer that we should not do this exercise on a daily basis since there is no importance. So this is, this is an exercise which has to be done on maybe every three, four months, depending on the extremities of market. And we lot we use a lot of internal systems and tools, which I call it Simba, which is our internal uh, market tracking system, scientific investing market breadth analyzer. So I'll show you how we use some of these systems. And actually, we'll be exposing these systems for everybody to use, of course, in a commercial way. And if you are interested to explore it, do fill the Google form showing your interest for an exclusive pre-launch discount. So let us go ahead and try to understand the current situation of market. And we will use fundamental technical quants, everything, because we don't discriminate between data. For us, everything which adds value is important. So let's go ahead. So first thing, starting with technicals, and I'm using Nifty 500. And why I'm using Nifty 500? Because I want to capture the whole breadth of market. A simple Nifty 50 reflects only 50 stocks, which is not a reflection of the pain or you know the excitement which is there in the market. But the top 500 stocks, they cover almost 80-85% of the market cap or the 85% of the revenue of the listed universe. So this is a good data. And if we look at it, uh, what we see, Somewhere in September 2021, Nifty 500 peaked out after a huge bull run, which uh, started in April 2020. And since then, it has gone nowhere. There was a correction which happened and started creating lower highs, lower lows. And in June 2022, it created a bottom. And this was the time from March to June where we created a lot of videos because we felt it is you know, important and we did highlight about the market attractiveness. And after that market did revert and market actually went in a good direction. But again, the correction has come. Now, few things you must note. Still, this correction, we have not breached the June 2022 levels. So, of course, there is a longer time correction. But in terms of price correction, we are still better than where we were in June 2022. The other important point I want to highlight is it's a weekly chart and the black line which you see it's a moving average. It's 40 week moving average, uh, which is basically a 20, 200 days moving average. And ideally for the market to stay in momentum, it is important for uh, air prices to be above 200 day moving average. And you can see this was the first time in the last two years when in March, April, it breached this 200 level. It tried to cross, then it acted as a resistance. And then finally, when it made a bottom and it started crossing, the same 200 a moving average came for support here. It came for support here. But now in Jan, it has been breached. And now the same 200 a moving average acted as a resistance here, here, here. And uh, you can see right now it's below 200 a moving average, which is not a great sign. The other thing, if you look at the RSI for the market to be in the bull mode, the RSI need to stay above 50. And even in this correction, it stayed above 50. Even initially when it topped out, it tried to stay above 50, but then finally it broke it and it went below 50. Then marginally it stayed above 50. Then again, it was below 50. And then after the June correction was over, it crossed 50. And even in this minor correction, it tried to stay above 50 again here. So this 200 year 40 D 40 week moving average and this 50 level, these levels have some kind of, you know, correlation where most of the times you will see when it is touching here, this line also comes near 50. And now it has broken the 40 week moving average. It has broken the uh, 50 level. This is not a good sign for the market. So for anybody who wants to be a trend based investor, who want to be a canceling kind of investor, who wants to ride the Bobet tub, this is not a good market and most of the folks will sit out. But this is the time of correction when the fundamental investors who buy purely on value, who buy purely on margin of safety and valuation, it is time for them to be excited and look at it. So for traders, nothing exciting, better to trade out for trend following, they should sit out. But somebody who wants to build a value portfolio looking at the valuation and margin of safety, this becomes interesting. But how much interesting? We have to look. So let's go from technicals to one more factor, liquidity, because 
uh, it is very, very important for money flow to be in the market because market moves because of demand and supply of shares. And if there are more buyers, it will go up. If there are more sellers, it will go down. And how much of money flowing in the market is important. And let me highlight you through two bull markets. We saw there was a 2017 bull market and we saw there was a 2020-21 bull market. In both bull markets, you will see the flow of liquidity was in a strong upward direction, strong upward direction. And whenever market consolidates or corrects, the liquidity flow growth misses. It becomes flat. So you can see this line was flat before 17. You can see after 18, this line was almost flat till 20 for two years. And you can see after almost mid of 2021, this line is on decline. And now it is almost flat to little increasing. So the liquidity is also not in the favor. The charts are also not in the favor. For Again, for traders, it's a market to sit out. But the later phase of this liquidity curve is where uh, with the price fall and time correction, again, the value investors should get excited and they should look at opportunities. So surely it's a market where value investors, they should be active. They should look for opportunities for traders and investors, it's a market to sit out or do minimal trades. So we keep doing this kind of exercise for our practitioner membership and uh, we meet on a regular interval on a weekly basis. Uh, we do market analysis, we do stock analysis, industry analysis, sector analysis, webinars. We cover technicals, we cover fundamentals, we cover quants. So if you are interested, this is the financial year end and we are running an uh, exclusive financial year end discount on our practitioner membership. Uh, do subscribe. Uh, the code is given. Use the exclusive discount code and uh, join us. Thank you. Now, uh, coming to value investing, because as I said, this is a market for value investors to be active. How much active they should be and what should be the allocation, how attractive the market is. So I will give you some data, visual interpretation of valuation data, and I will take Nifty 50 and I will take Nifty 500. And I will take two valuation metric. The first is PE ratio and the second is dividend yield. I will take two extremes of market because the greatest fear and the greatest greed, the market hangs in between both of them. And there can't be a better time than 2007, 2008, because 2020, it was in a very small window, one month, and people didn't even feel what a bear market looks like. So let's take a 2007 data. And in, if you see the Nifty P, it was overvalued by 17% at December 2007. And the reason for it to be basically Nifty traded somewhere around 26 times P. Uh, and basically it traded for three, four years. It was at a high valuation driven by growth and all. And when the growth grows, it corrects. But when the Nifty corrected, it was available at 44% discount. So it doesn't, uh, you know, trade in the same, uh, you know, uniform way in terms of overvaluation and undervaluation. It was 44% discount because the PE went 12. And if you see the average PEs, they will rise somewhere between, you know, 20, 21 kind of a number. Currently, if we see the discount of Nifty 50 with respect to its historic mean or median, uh, it is somewhere around 12% and the mean value is 13%. So we are almost near to the mean value. And if you take a monthly SIP of Nifty, right, uh, from 2007, if every month you kept doing SIP and you never sold, you could have generated an XIRR of 10.6%. So if you assume you would have invested in all sorts of market, bull market, bear market, still you generated a CAGR of 10.6%. And right now from attractiveness perspective, you are somewhere here. So my hunch is from here, the market should do at least more than 10.6% kind of XIRR if somebody is investing in all the months which are more attractive than current period. This is how I will interpret it. If we look at dividend yield, we'll see similar kind of patterns. In December 2007, when the market was at its peak, the discount was minus 31%. And in December 2008, when you know, we call it trahi trahi hona, that kind of market where, you know, the small cap index went 80% plus down. The cortex of the world were down by 50, 60%. The nifty was down, I think, 58%. There was a discount of 54%. And the mean value is somewhere around 11%. And the current discount is 13%. So we are almost at a 1.47% dividend deal. Uh, against the 1.3% historical mean of the dividend yield. So both of them, they say that we have come somewhere in the fair market zone to little attractive maybe. 
and somebody who is investing uh, from here as a SIP, if the market gets more and more interesting, the chances are one will get more than 10.6% return purely based on data. Let's park this information and let's look at Nifty 500 now. If we look at Nifty 500 now, Nifty 500 is more volatile because it captures top 500 stocks where you have your mid cap uh, index, you have your small cap index, the 251 to 500 stocks and all. If we see the same thing here on a PE basis, the worst discount was minus 7%. The best discount was plus 51%. And that is the kind of volatility, you know, mid cap and small cap index, you know, commands. And if you see the mean value of discount, it's around 22%. And currently we are at 11% discount. So though it looks attractive, still the kind of volatility, and of course, these discounts don't last long. It may last only for two, three months, but I'm just talking about extremes. And uh, the thing is, because they're so volatile at extremes, they can shift to, you know, the worst of the scenarios. I mean, and I'm just thinking from the worst of the scenario, this is where we stand somewhere close to the middle in terms of dividend yield also, we are almost near the center. So the thing is whether we look at Nifty 50 or Nifty 500, it looks like we are just near to the fair valuation. And if somebody would have done SIP in mid cap and small cap index, so sorry, this is small 8.9% is your small cap index SIP monthly SIP return without selling and 12.9% is your mid cap monthly CAGR without selling. So if somebody has been investing throughout, this is what it, he generated. So if somebody is generated in the right side, somebody is investing in the right side band, again, the data says the overall return should be higher provided the history repeats in terms of mean CAGR. If the mean return of Nifty itself decreases to 7%, of course, the expectations have to be lower, but I'm just trying to give you a sense. So it looks like this is a market where, you know, 10, 12% plus return can be generated. Also, we try to cover sector uh, deep dives through our super sessions and we try to cover sector when the sector is not going through any kind of, you know, momentum FOMO, when we try to study when the sector is in a bad phase, when there is some margin of safety, when there is a good time for everybody to study in detail. Uh, post our work and do his due diligence. So we are doing a deep dive on IT sector. And I think uh, I haven't found a very good study on IT sector so far and the kind of depth we are going and we are leveraging our scientific investing community where some of the IT sector veterans, they're collaborating with me. And I believe uh, we are going to do a decent job and we are going to bring some of the insights uh, which you will have never seen in the IT sector. This is going to be eight hour long session spread across two sessions. So the link is there. Now we have seen technical, we have seen quants, we have seen fundamental, but let us go through also a time correction. Why the concept of time is important? Because even if you look at the PE ratio, your PE ratio is of course your price movement and your EPS. And if your price corrects, it becomes attractive. If your EPS grows, it becomes attractive. And if your EPS grows over a period of time, then also it becomes attractive. So market becomes attractive by price correction, by EPS growth spent over a period of time. Also, when we look at history of time of correction, the 2008 correction from top to peak, and this is Nifty 500, mostly for Nifty 50 and Nifty 500 will be same. This is for Nifty 50. Uh, the peak to peak correction was almost 58% and 455 days, almost one year and uh, 90 days. The second correction was 27% and 458 days, again, one year and 10 days. The third correction was 23% and 393 days, almost one year, one month. The fourth correction, 2021, of course, it went above here, but I'm assuming it was not much of a gain, like from 2018 to 2019 and Hardly you gained something. So if I take 2018 as a peak, basically because people didn't make good money, we went through almost 36% correction and 576 days. Uh, it was kind of longest correction if you just you know ignore this, which is almost your uh, one year 200, almost more than one and a half years of correction at a nifty level. And currently, if we see price wise, we have not corrected much. So here it's a 58%, here it's a 27%, here it's 23%, 36%. This correction is just a 10% correction, but in terms of number of days, we are 
almost at the second worst correction. And if you combine this 576 and 516 days, and if you combine all this data and you will see the kind of returns have come from 2018, despite of this bull, big bull market, because there is a big fall, these returns are nothing great returns. So even though this price correction is lesser and every time when price corrects, we think of 50% of correction, we have to look in total totality of data. And if we look at last six years of data, uh, we have gone from almost 11,400 to 17,000, which might be a 8-9% kind of CAGR on a per year basis. Same thing with Nifty 500. So how to capture this time correction and price correction? And we saw the fundamental valuation which, where it says that we are almost at a fair zone where if somebody invests a 10% kind of CAGR can be expected from here. So there is something called price bolta hai, and this chart is very interesting. And again, if you go back to our videos from April to June, you will see this kind of analysis we have used. See, it's a very interesting chart. What we have done, we have taken a Nifty 500 closing price data and there are two line charts which are plotted. If you see the blue line chart, it says what is the kind of return we have made in last one year, three year, five year, average of that have tried to take a lag price, historic return of short term, mid term, long term kind of return. And the orange line is from the same time period, the next X year of return. Of course, this X is a kind of value which we have try to factor in the short, mid, long. We have done a lot of calculations to normalize it. But the idea is whenever your historic returns are great, and we all know that Nifty 500 doesn't give on the mean, it gives 14, 15% of return, 12, 13% of return. So if it becomes too high, the reversion to mean concept will work. So when your historic return was almost 45%, the next X years of return, short, mid, long, Ignore short, but the mid and long was negative. And when you entered in a month where your historic return from all the time periods, mid and long was very, very bad. The next few year return, the next few mid and long term return was very, very good. Same thing repeated here. And in COVID, it went here. So those who have invested in COVID, when they will look at their mid and long term return, it is going to be very, very healthy despite of all this correction. But you notice when this blue line is there in the middle, which is around 15%, your next mid and long term returns are also not very bad and not very great. If you see it varies between 8 to 20%. Currently, we are in the same zone. So it says don't have very low expectations, but don't have very high expectation. The mid to long term returns from current market should be somewhere around the same, you know, 9, 10 to 20%. And if you remember the fundamental analysis, that should also say that, you know, you should expect a return more than 10%. So this is the way of triangulating data, fundamental, technical, quants, price, liquidity. And when all of them start communicating similar kind of message, we feel that we are in the right direction. So this is not a market to be super excited. This is not the market, of course, to be very sad. And somebody who can do a, so if at an index level broadly, you can expect double digit a uh, lower double digit to mid double digit kind of return for somebody who is selective buyer who can do his homework and choose stocks which can beat the index. Surely uh, these are starting of exciting times for them. And my suggestion would be to look for stocks. And actually the system I was talking about from where we derive a lot of these insights in actually in our system, we go at a sector level, we go at an index level, we go at an industry level, we go at a stock level, and we try to provide insights into what can happen. So do fill the form if you are interested in uh, getting uh, the pre-launch discount. And I will see you in the next video soon. Thank you.